Welcome to another episode of Transbra. I am your host, Mars, and I'm here with... Uh... Smart ass. Right on. I like how I was just talking about how I, we say uh a lot, and I literally did it in the intro. Like, yeah. god damn. <laughs> Horrible. Uh, oh, well. Fuck it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of nice just doing an episode with you, because it's been a while, dude. And yeah, it's, it's it's a little bit more relaxed, you know. Like, there, I feel like there's always a little bit of pressure with the guests to like, you know, make it a pretty solid episode and not bore them or whatever. Um, but I figure, yeah, like, uh, like I was saying, I think, I think uh, talking about seven months on T would be great, um, because that's where I'm at, and it's been a while since we talked about that. Um, and then I was gonna wanna also just share some stuff that I've dealt with in the past two weeks. Yeah, that, navigating being trans. On yeah. The job. Yeah, probably like the heaviest two weeks uh, in my transition for sure. Uh, so I guess like last time, I you want me to start talking about some things that way you it'll refresh your memory since. Yes. Um, and then just in case anybody is listening for the first time, I'm, you know, I'm basically coming up on seven months on T this month and you've been on T for how long again? Uh, it was four years in December. Four years in December. And just in case anybody's super just confused as to what T is, we're talking about testosterone, hormone replacement therapy, if you're trans. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, with that said, um, so seven months on T, I'm just going to start with like, I'm going to start with the mental because I don't really have a lot to say about that. And then you can share uh, if you recall anything mental wise, but like, I think mentally um, on seven months, not a lot has changed from like like four months, you know, in comparison to that first month, that first month was pretty like awful. Um, but like not a, not, not much to, to cover there. I'm still pretty, I feel pretty calm. And, um, I, I will still say like when I get angry, it's like super intense. Uh, but, but that's pretty much it. I mean, there's no, like, I haven't been thinking about, oh, I regret this or, you know, should, should I be doing this or, or anything like that? You know what I mean? Like it's, I'm in a pretty good state of mind, basically. Um, uh, and obviously not, I'm in a good state of mind, despite the fact that obviously I still deal with, you know, dysphoria here and there. Um, but aside from that, you know, not too bad. Um, what do you remember as far as mentally? Um, I Mentally, on seven months, I remember my hormones were still pretty haywire. Yeah. So I just remember a lot of rage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, but dude, like I just, I was just, I would just get so mad that I wanted to break it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's yeah, that's one of the things that like I've. That's like a little bit new. Like I mean, I've, like, I like I didn't really experience sadness or stress like it all just came in the form of anger yeah so i just had a fuck ton of rage right yeah instead I, of a variety of emotions just a fuck ton of rage <laughs> yeah um i think breaking something is definitely a good way to like describe it i mean i've never been one to break stuff when i get mad but yeah uh, me neither but like i just never had the urge to i just never got mad to the point where I wanted to break something or punch a wall until I started T. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same. Um, but uh, I will touch up on this, though. Um, I've been uh, taking, a, you know, my shot every week, the uh, half CC or whatever. You were taking it every two weeks, right? Yeah. Uh, after a year of it not stopping, I changed to point two five every week it, when you say it not stopping you're referring to the the rage or whatever no i'm referring to uh my cycle oh gotcha you're yeah the dreaded unfortunate thing that happens yeah i gotcha <laughs> um yeah see i, I again still I'm, i've been hella lucky with that like mine 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 was gone after like what like a month or two so i don't have that hasn't come back, knock on wood, but but I um one thing I will like wanted to talk about though is um I you know, I'll probably do an episode on on uh, on on being on testosterone again maybe like in a month or two cuz 
Um, I don't know if I talked about, I don't know if I told you this or not, but basically the doctor that I was seeing, um, just quit. Uh, so there was like, there, there's been, there's very few doctors in the town I live in that, you know, will prescribe, um, you know, testosterone and, you know, for trans people and stuff. Uh, but the doctor that I was seeing, which I had been waiting since January to get my T level results back from, um, apparently I, Last time I had talked to her, she had gone on vacation and then they finally called me from the office and said that she quit. And so right now they don't have anybody that can take over. Um, so I was like, okay, great. That, that's, that sucks. Um, so I literally was looking up like, you know, places to go to for, you know, a state away, which would suck to drive like three hours. Um, but yeah, like it, that, that's happened in the past four weeks or whatever. And that sucked. Um, because. Like, obviously that's not anything anybody plans, you know, like, oh, where's yeah. my, my backup doctor? And I, I was like, wow, came out of nowhere. And again, like another thing that was really sitting heavy is like me freaking out that, you know, my T levels are, are, are bad or I'm going to die or something. <laughs> Cause I haven't, I haven't known, but, um, I feel like if they were really bad, I would, I, I would be able to notice something, you know, um, as far as my mood or whatever, um, which my mood has been fairly normal. So I think I think I'm okay, um, but it just it fucking sucks that she just or whatever. Apparently she quit unless like they fired her. I don't know what happened. Um, so thankfully I had started seeing a therapist um, like last month. You know I started seeing a therapist because um, I've just been wanting to talk to somebody about you know my transition while I'm going through. Like at least for the first year, I really wanted to talk to a professional, and then. Um, you know, not that it's my first time talking to a therapist, you know, I had seen one before a gender therapist, but this is just a therapist, or a psychologist, which is way better experience so far for me uh, than a gender therapist, um, which is kind of interesting. Like she's been just openly just speaking her mind. I, I don't know how to describe it, but I felt like when I went to a gender therapist that there was, al it almost felt like he was talking out of a script and there were certain things like he won't say or maybe jokes he won't say, or, you know, like, like he was just there to like, make me feel good. I mean, obviously, that's a therapist does that. But like, this psychologist is just more like you, it feels more authentic. Yes, thank you. Authentic. Yeah, like, she's just more just, yeah, you know, just more comfortable with like, I don't know, man, it's, a, it's just nice, you know, um, and I can say whatever. And I know that she will like, ask questions or, you know, she's, she's made some some subtle jokes that I think any other patient might be like, that's kind of transphobic, but obviously not me. Uh, but, but um, you know, it's been good. And thank God I started seeing her because if I hadn't started seeing her, then I wouldn't be able to get a recommendation to the endocrinologist, which is what I'm doing now. Um, so I went to this endocrinologist uh, right when I got back into town last, this past Saturday, because his next appointment wasn't going to be until May 30th, obviously. So yeah so i i went to this um endo and i don't know what your experience because you saw an endocrinologist right uh yeah but um the one in my old state had a let's see it was a five month waiting list yeah to get in damn yeah because they have maybe two endocrinologists um that have experience with trans patients yeah. across the whole damn state. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was one close that was like 45 minutes to an hour from my house or one that was two hours away. I chose yeah. the, uh, the 45 minute one and Lord, uh, her office or her staff were just so unorganized. Um, like you couldn't get in touch. I had to actually um, go to the office for my first shot because I, I didn't get my tea in time. Like she didn't give me the prescription like she said she would. Yeah. Uh, so it just wasn't a good experience. And, now, and the person that I'm going to now in my current state, uh, she's just so, so much better. And she's not even an endocrinologist. She mm -hmm. just has, she's just specializes in internal medicine and has plenty of experience with, uh, 
trans patients being LGBT herself. So yeah, well, and it's just nice for her. Uh, I mean, I had already been on T for like a year or two whenever I transferred over to her. So like I had already gone through the messy part. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, whenever I changed over to her, it was just so nice because like her office is just a lot more professional and she even gives like a resource list to trans patients, uh, of different doctors that of, you know, like top surgeons, OBGYNs and just, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that's what I will say about like the endocrinologist I see now. It's like it's like a whole other experience from like going to this stupid clinic that I used to go to, which was like some women's clinic that sees that you know they work they work on a sliding scale. So at the time I didn't have insurance, so I was like, uh, you know, I'll try this this way. But you know, like when I went to that office, like it didn't seem like she was very knowledgeable about things. You know, um, it seemed like I asked her so many questions. And provided her with more answers than she could give me versus I'm going to this endocrinologist now. And it just, this dude seems like, like he doesn't screw around. You know, he was very serious about if I'm seeing a therapist, which is good, obviously, you know? Um, yeah. And then, you know, I think he referred to himself as like a classical <laughs> endocrinologist, which I thought was interesting. So he's really by the, I guess, old school, maybe standards. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's not bad. Um, and I'm going from like, you know, I used to give myself my own tee shot to now, uh, in order to get, get uh, a tee shot, I go to his office every other week. Um, he said the only way, um, I could give myself my own tee shot would be through gels or, uh, with the, I forget what it's called, but it's basically like one of those, I think insulin pens kind of, you know what I mean? Oh, injections. Sorry. Yes. Injection. Yeah. Um, which that costs a lot. So he said, you know, that's the way that apparently, at least in this state, I don't know if yours is different, but here, apparently that's the way they do it in this town that I live in is the endocrinologist will give you, um, you know, your testosterone shot. And he made it very uh, clear to me that, you know, he was like testosterone is a controlled substance and all this stuff. Like, I mean, it, it's just a very different experience. Like this guy, you know, you can tell he knows his stuff. He also cares about like what I'm going to do with the testosterone versus I go to a clinic that, you know, has, I don't know, let's say 20 plus uh, trans uh, clients every day or whatever. And they're just kind of like, you know, running through the motions of it, you know, yeah. that's it. Um, so, but again, I didn't have insurance at the time. So do I regret that? No, because that's just how I ended up starting, you know, but um, it's just, It'll be interesting because, like, I used to take my shot every week, and I'm going to do it every two weeks now is what he um, he said. Like, you know, it should be fine for me to do it every two weeks. So I'm going to try that, but kind of a little nervous about my mood getting all jacked up. But I think I should be fine. Um, so this is the, the longest I haven't. So, like, I'm going to have my tee shot by the end of this week. So typically by now I already had a shot. And so in my brain I'm thinking you know, my voice is definitely sounding – you know, less masculine and uh, everything is reversing. I know it's not, but like <laughs> that, that's, you know, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, this. Should... yeah. Um, I mean, in my experience, whenever I was on every other week, it's just the main thing that I noticed was that I would get irritable by the time, you know, my T levels were dropping and um, I didn't notice a change in anything besides my mood and my energy levels. I would have, Mm -hmm. lack of energy too yeah so that's why that's one reason why i changed to every week because i didn't like the peaks and valleys yeah yeah i'm gonna i don't know we'll see you. um but i don't even pay for my tea with my insurance because like my insurance insurance doesn't cover the 10 milliliter vials mm -hmm. and so my therapist gives me a written prescription for the 10 milliliter vials to um give to the pharmacy and they fill it and i just go to the good rx app and yeah. get a coupon for uh the 10 milliliter vial of tea and it'll be like 40 bucks really mine was yeah I, that's what i used to do and mine wasn't 40 bucks with that code it used to be 20 bucks 
Well, I mean, I I guess it depends on what pharmacy you use too. Yeah, I guess. Um, because I noticed um, it was different by pharmacy. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, again, like, I mean, I'm I'm totally okay with the way the endocrinologist does it because it feels like it's more. Um, I asked them like how many people, um, you know, have changed their mind about going on testosterone, or whatever, or HRT, and and he said like only two so far, you know. Um, but yeah, he said you know, he wants to make sure that people are doing the right thing by going on this because of all the changes. And so like, I really appreciate that, the, you know, his style because he's being cautious, you know? Um, but again, it's like, what if he didn't exist? Right. Right. And I had no, nowhere else to go. It's like, that puts me in the position of like, what should I do? Like, you know, to get testosterone, I have to drive two hours away and stuff. Um, so it's kind of frustrating, like depending on where you live, you know, it, um, it's just how far is he from your place? Not far at all. He's like 12 minutes, 12, 15 minutes from my house, you know? Oh, dang. Yeah. But my other option, if, if he wasn't here and there was no, uh, you know, other endocrinologists that work with trans people would be to, you know, I'd probably drive like to, let's say Oklahoma, I guess, Oklahoma city maybe or something. Uh, so yeah. Damn. So yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. It definitely made me, you know, understand uh people that live in places that don't have any services at all right so like yeah. like i've been lucky that i had any um and obviously there's people that live in a town where there isn't any at all um so yeah um i will say that but that that's pretty much all my mental stuff um should we jump into physical sure so yeah physical i <laughs> Probably because of my age, but like I've been hella, uh, I, I've been freaking out about just going bald and I don't care about going bald as long as I have a shitload of facial hair to make up for it, <laughs> but I ain't there. Which you do. <laughs> I, I, I do, but I don't. It's just in the, the chin area. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to look like, yeah. So I don't know. To me, like, I feel like I've, I've lost quite a bit of hair within like seven months, but again, I feel like that probably has a lot to do with my age, you know, versus let's say a 17 year old that started. Um, yeah. Um, my other friend who's older said, uh, it had to do with the age he transitioned. Exactly. Why he, well, uh, his name, well, I can't say his name because he's still two, but we'll just refer to him as John. Okay. Um, John, he, he started at I think thirty five or something like that. Yeah. In his mid thirties and uh he lost a bit of his uh, of his uh hair on, up top, but it it definitely made up for it with the rest of his body and his face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, it he told me it definitely was his age yeah, exactly. the age he transitioned. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm kind of paranoid about that just because, like, if I had already gotten, like, top surgery, then, you know, I also don't care as much. But, like, I just don't want that combination of, like, going bald, you know, I don't have top surgery. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't want to think about that a whole lot. But, but I mean, yeah, aside from that, though, yeah, definitely losing some hair on my head, but definitely gaining hair on my body, which <laughs> I don't care. It's just very noticeable um it feels like in the past two months it just like my body exploded in unnecessary hair um, question shoot um is 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 the hair you're losing like starting at the crown of your head or like at your hairline no it's it it's more like i know my my hair is like it's receding um it's just my hair's thinned out a lot basically Oh. Like I probably made it seem like I'm going bald because I'm just freaking out. But I mean, to be honest, it's it's thinned out. Is all that happened? I'm not like, you know, missing patches of hair. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Then yeah. Then if it's receding and it's not like at the crown of your head, then yeah. I don't think you have much to worry about right, right now. Right. Yeah. So um, but yeah, I I would say that's pretty much it for like the physical too, like. I just, just a lot of body, body hair as far as I can tell. And I mean, but that's it. I don't know if my voice got deeper. I feel like it's been the same for three months now. So, um, I remember it was at like 
six months, I believe, like from month one to five, like my voice gradually dro was dropping. But like when six month hit, my voice just like took a huge drop to the through the floor. Yeah. <laughs> like it was just a big difference between five and six months, man. Right. And uh, as far as hair, um, honestly, I didn't start getting chest hair until like this year. So my body hair is isn't <laughs> isn't like yours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A lot of it, I think, just has to do with genetics, though, too. Like, you know. Yeah, my brother is 32, and I asked him when his beard finally, like, got f full, even though it's patchy. And he said, and he said, this year, and he's 32. So I'm like, well, fuck, man. I, gotta, I still got a long way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Hey, something to look forward to when you age, though, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but that's pretty, I don't know, is, is that it as far as like your seven, seven month update? Like, um, I'm trying to think, uh, leg hair definitely got thicker. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, I don't know if I got like a smidge taller, um, but T isn't supposed to do that, but I think it did over the summer i started let's see i started tea in winter and over the summer is whenever i grew a little bit oh like i went from like five three and a half to like five four really well how old were you when you started again uh let's see i was going on 23 hmm. yeah so i was 22 almost 23 whenever i started I mean, it's possible i don't know i can't i'm trying to remember when exactly do we stop growing but i mean i thought it was age 16 <laughs> no i thought it was like 18 oh, and also i think it maybe depends on like your sex but i don't know but that that's interesting i wish t would make you grow at least like a couple inches <laughs> yeah for real uh yeah but is that is that it dude I can't remember um, if I mentioned this in the last mm -hmm. episode we did this, but I do remember sometime in the first year, like, I got broader, like, my back broadened, like, you yeah. know, your traps, the muscles you used to shrug, those grew, and so did my lats. Yeah. I don't know what, like, I, I, don't, I didn't pay attention to when that happens. Oh, you know whenever it happens because they hurt like a motherfucker. Hmm. See, like, I have issues sleeping, so I always assume, like, my body just hurts from sleeping. So could have been the other thing, though. Um, I only had trouble sleeping whenever I took my shot too late. Yeah. Uh, like, I make sure I either do it early as fuck in the morning or right before I go to bed to where I'll fall asleep before it even, you know, gets in my bloodstream. Hmm. Yeah, I usually take mine early. But, um, I mean, that's all I got to say about the seven-month thing update. Okay. Um, so, unless you have... Yeah, I think that's all I got Yeah, to. there isn't a whole lot. So, but like I said, I think I'll, I'll do one of these maybe again, maybe in a few months when my levels are sorted out. Um yeah but yeah so the other thing i want to talk about is the past two weeks <laughs> and uh <laughs> uh i'm gonna try not to rant but like no joke i just have so much shit to say like it's been and i i don't want to really talk about like what i do for a living and get into too many details as far as that just because i want to keep some you know damn privacy around here but basically it required me traveling to go to a training for my job all right so it was my first time traveling uh, as, you know, a trans man. And uh, the whole thing was kind of like, you know, as far as being stealth, like that was kind of cool. All right. I'm not going to lie. Like it is nice. And I say cool because like it's cool to like not fucking talk about being trans, you know, like, yeah. like it's something that I do like here or with you, like, you know, but 
in my day to day life, like, do I want to talk about that? No, not really. I don't want to explain people anything about my, you know, identity or whatever. So it was kind of like, I don't know, it was just like really weird, but like in a in a good way to like step out into the world, go to a different state, you know, uh, sit in a classroom with people that didn't know anything about me and just, you know, perceive me as just being, you know, another dude. So in that aspect, I, I mean, I will say I definitely like almost instantly I thought maybe I should go stealth because this is kind of fucking nice, you know? <laughs> um, but obviously like, I mean, again, like I always say like, I can't, stay stealth just because like some sometimes shit comes up and I just want to be open about it or make a joke about the fact that I'm trans that's just me I don't know like um but I will say um I dealt with like a shitload of dysphoria for the past two weeks like really hardcore like probably the worst I've had since Preeti um you know a lot of it again was to do just like I, I didn't know it was what I was expecting going to this training um so like when I got there, you know, obviously, you know, uh, it was just a training with cla- a training in a classroom. There was modules and there was group activities and blah, blah, blah. Um, and, you know, I just tried my best not to let dysphoria, you know, or my thoughts psych me out, you know, because it, it happens pretty quick. You know, within probably the, the first day, I'm already thinking about like people are staring at me because I'm trans and I know they're not, you know, or the the shirt I'm wearing is, is not, it's not working. Everybody can tell that I don't have, you know, a, a dude's chest or whatever. So it's just like a lot of shit that was going back and forth in my head. And, um, it just made me nervous, anxious, like just a fucking mess. Um, and of course, like what I was going to wear while I was at this training was, you know, like it, it was, it was a uniform, but like, it was a kind of uniform that, it isn't too bad. Like it's like a collared shirt, right? So, you know, oh, yeah, see. collared shirts when you don't have top surgery is probably your best option. Uh, that or, or a hoodie. But uh, so, yeah, while I was there, um, unexpectedly, I didn't know this, but apparently they provide you uniforms. So the uniform they provided was like, you know, the, the shirt, the, the pants, I don't give a fuck about, but like the shirt was like a polo shirt. And it, I hated that shirt so much because <laughs> That like I tried to get a pretty big shirt, you know, an oversized shirt. Yeah. Um, but even still, like that shirt, just the way it felt, it, it fit me. Like it, it just felt like it was snug. You were just really self. Yeah, dude. It felt like it was snug in some areas, and I was just like, it was fucking killing me. Um. And uh, but the process of getting my uniforms, of course, like uh, was to undress with you know locker room with like, you know, I don't know, twenty men, and um, it's not like. You know, it was just like the fact that it was unexpected. So like, I didn't expect it. So mentally, I wasn't prepared. Now, I'm not saying it freaked me out because, oh, my God, like I'm in a a room with, you know, naked dudes or whatever, or like not naked. They're all wearing underwear. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't freaking out because I was with dudes. It was just freaking out because of certain you didn't know what their reaction was. Right, that, and I didn't know how I was going to get away with, like, blending in. So, so you know, as soon as I realized, like, what was about to happen, it was go with the rest of the dudes who have already perceived me as a dude, you know, and, and kind of accepted me as one of them or whatever. Go into that locker room or just go find the men's room, the men's bathroom. I didn't want to do that because then I felt like if I go to the men's bathroom, maybe then I'm going to stand out more. People are going to be like, why did he go there? Fucking weirdo. You know what I'm saying? So, so I was yeah. like, fuck it. I need to just like, you know, kind of fucking man up and go into this room. Uh, despite the fact that I might just fucking die. Uh, so, so yeah, I went in there and it was, it wasn't really like a locker. It was just like a fucking like giant dressing room with like benches all around and like, I swear like 20 dudes in there and there was really no spot for me to go. So I was like, not about to get undressed like in the middle. (laughs) So, so, so yeah, I just like found the nearest corner, uh, you know, of like kind of by the entryway, I got in that corner and then this other dude came in right after me and of course stood like right next to me. And I was like, so fucking annoyed by that. I was like, out of all areas, you had to pick my area. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So it was just, you know, this is the kind of stuff like that. I think a lot of, you know, I, I don't know, younger kids who want to 
who like they have questions yeah about. well not not just questions about but like y- there's a lot of mental like preparing for real life situations that when you're trans and, and and just a kid you know and i'm saying kid but like 14 15 you know you, you just want to go get on t and you're just looking at all these changes you're like oh you know i get i get like facial hair i get this you're only looking at the the positives right but you know you don't look you don't yeah. they don't think about and i don't at least i don't think that they think about is this kind of shit you know the only reason i was able to like con- you know handle this is just because like I feel like mentally I'm more of a, you know, I'm, I'm a grown up, right. I'm, I'm 36. Like if I was thrown into that kind of a situation, let's say in high school, I 16 and maybe I was on T for like three months or whatever. Like I would probably shit bricks. I'd probably go to the office, cry and want to be sent home, you know? So it was one of those things where like I either fall apart or I just, you know, like however I handled that situation, it was going to, you know, make for the rest of the next two weeks. So either I get clocked or I just try to blend in for the next two weeks. And so, so yeah, I undressed only the top area, then the bottom area. Thank God I was wearing an undershirt, um, but it was fine. You know, I did it fast and I left and that was it. Um, but, but it was heavy as fuck. Like, because I don't, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if you've been around dudes in locker rooms, I'm assuming so, but like, you don't want to think about it, but when you're in there and if you're lacking certain things, you know, be it the bottom area or top area or whatever, if you're lacking anything, it just, self-consciously makes you think of it you know you're just you can't help yeah yeah Yeah, like i feel that way whenever i go swimming because of because of my top surgery scars right and like i just know people are gonna ask about it and i'm just trying to craft i get crafty to try to remain stealth if um i just don't know them well enough to know like they would be okay with it you know exactly um like this past weekend i i don't know if you use meetup.com but yeah, I, I do went but i went to play sand volleyball with people i didn't know and dude it was so fucking hot i just wanted to take off my shirt and you mm-hmm. know but i didn't because i just didn't this was the first time meeting both of them i didn't feel like explaining that yeah so I just sucked it up and kept it right. on. And I mean, and yeah, you could probably always like lie about it. I don't think, I don't think that's one thing I will say. I don't, I, I don't think most dudes, you know, spend time getting to know the trans community. So I, they're kind of clueless in my opinion. Yeah. But I get you. Yeah. It was a dude and a, and a girl and I just didn't, yeah. I just didn't feel like crossing that bridge. Right. Yet. Exactly. So Sorry, were you done? <laughs> um, I was trying to remember um what else I was going to say. Um oh yeah, uh and it, it doesn't help that like okay, so I work at a gym where there's a lot of old people yeah. there and dude, old men in the locker room are the worst. <laughs> Like, they'll just be butt ass naked and try to chat it up with you. I'm like, dude, stop. <laughs> Leave me alone. It's so awkward. Yeah. It is awkward. Like, they just chatted up butt ass naked with no care in the world. Yeah. D- old dudes are just really confident in their wrinkly ass old body. <laughs> I guess. Uh, like, they literally just give no fucks. Yeah. No, they don't. I, I will say that much. But is a uh, yeah so i don't know just going back to that but like yeah that that was that was one thing that initially happened i think it happened on the f- first day so like literally the first day of this training we ended up doing that and like it just really completely fucked me up um uh another thing too that i dealt with in the past two weeks is like there are certain people um on this campus uh, for the training that were from my past um, that I did not expect at fucking all to see them there because it's it's a different state. I I knew them from a different state, uh, so another state, and and so yeah, I'm like, I didn't expect that. So I don't know if you've dealt with this either, but like, I have never thought about what that would be like. Um, you know, somebody that you you know used to know uh, personally from your past yeah. that doesn't know what you look like now, who you are now. And so it, it was like, 
dude, I've had legit nightmares dude, about it was, that. Yeah. Like, like seeing people like I have nightmares about my ten year high school reunion because <laughs> it's in twenty twenty. Yeah. And I, I, I just don't know how I'm gonna fucking handle yeah. it. Did you? Do you want to go to it? I mean, you don't have to. I don't think. Like, I want to go to it. Like, I need, and but like, I just have yeah. like these dreaded nightmares about it. But like, I need to go. I need to face my fucking. Yeah. Demons. Hey, you could be the trans token guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh but yeah, like nothing I don't think anything can prepare you for that. That's like super fucking trippy. So like there were several yeah. too. Like it's not I'm not just talking about just one person, right? There were several people that I had at some point worked with at a different state that were there and I was just like, fuck my life. Like they probably know me still by my old name and I didn't want anybody to say that not there when I'm trying to blend in and I'm stealth. And then on top of that, like, how do you even explain that? You go up to them, you're like, oh, hey, Paul, remember me? <laughs> like, and they just look at you like, who the fuck is this guy? You know, like, it, just really weird. Um, so I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't usually avoid people, but I avoided them like, like, <laughs> like, no. F like <laughs> yeah. <a bike. laughs> yeah, I was like, anytime I saw any of them, I was just like, just go the other way because fuck. I, I don't know how to start that conversation. Um yeah um i've i avoided my um you know how whenever you grow up as a girl and even if you're not attracted to men you're basically told to date men so you do uh i've i avoided my ex until one day he added and messaged me on facebook i was like fuck he added a message on facebook after seeing like your profile picture and your new name or that's yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah. Like he recognized me, I guess it's just, or he knew about it. Yeah. He had to have known about it because sister and his sister are like yeah. best friends. Uh, so that's probably how we found out. And uh, apparently uh, whenever he found out right, whenever I started T, he had blamed himself for me for, quote unquote turn in me. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So like he just went through mental turmoil apparently and it and I was like, no, and I had to explain to him how like, you know, I would go to bed crying every night and, you know, just all that fun yeah, stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it just it's I don't know, that's it's just fucking weird. It's a mind fuck is the best way I can describe it. Like and uh, on on one of my last days, or the last day, no, I think it was the day before my last day. Um, one per specific person that I had like try not to you know engage with because they're from my past, and it's not like I hate this guy or anything. Like you know, uh, you know, as I recall, he was a he was a really nice friend and stuff. Uh, we just lost communication or whatever, and our contact, and um, you know, it's like I don't hate the guy, but it's just so awkward that I was trying to avoid it and I didn't want him to say my old name either um so but apparently yeah like I I I ran into him finally and um uh I don't even remember if he said my name I'm like trying not to <laughs> recall that but anyways like we were talking you know he, he finally caught up to me and he was like hey and I'm like you know oh hey <laughs> like just really really awkward I don't know um I guess he just because just because he yeah, didn't know what to yeah. call it. Yeah, and uh, he was really nice. Okay, he was real nice. Like uh, he obviously didn't really ask about it because I imagine he probably thought it'd be awkward. But it was just weird, you know. Because in my mind, all I'm thinking is he's probably wondering why there's you know facial hair or why my voice is dropped or like he's probably like what the fuck happened to this person, um, you know. And it was just it was it was odd. Um, and, uh, but yeah, then come to find out from my, he had, he had contacted, he, this guy's nice. All right. He had contacted my ex-girlfriend, um, to let her know that I was on this campus where apparently my ex-girlfriend's mom was. And I'm just like, holy shit, you know? So then my ex-girlfriend, yeah, oh, wow. really, my ex-girlfriend contacted me, contacted me and said, Hey, uh, you know, just a heads up my my mom is, is around that campus and I'm like, cool. <laughs> like, again, another person I didn't want to see, you know, because, and, and none of these people hate me. Yeah, It's just me. From my perspective, I don't want to deal with that. It makes me nervous, especially because like, 
I'm pretty stealth on this campus. And the last thing I need is like some old conversation about anything that might clock me. So I didn't want to deal with it, but man, dude, like, yeah, I don't, that's probably my least favorite things right now is like, I don't want to run into anybody from my past unexpectedly because I feel like you have to be in this mental place where if you're not, it really fucks you up. Yeah, I I guess part of me is scared to go to my um, high school reunion because I know I come from a very, very rural, conservative, small town. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I just know, like, once the dudes see me, like, they know, I, I know I'll just get, get some reaction that will boil down to, you do know you'll never be one of us, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, like, I just know it's at least one of them will say something to that right. effect. And I'll just, I'll just be like, I'm trying to figure out how to respond because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it takes a lot of mental preparation and, and, you know, I'm thinking I might say, who said I wanted to be one of you whenever I just want to be me or something. Yeah. I mean, I don't, know? I really don't think that they would say something like that. I mean, you'd have to. No, you don't understand. I went to some fucking. I went to school with some fucking assholes. Okay, well, I mean, if they're that big of an asshole, because I mean, you'd have to be a major asshole to say something like that, you know? They, they, they are. It's like one guy that was used to be my best friend, uh, basically in high school. Like whenever I came out and the whole Caitlyn Jenner mm-hmm. thing happened, uh, he he made it a point to misgender and dead name me, even to people. Like, even the people that were calling me by the right name and pronouns, like, he just, he was just a real dick about it. Fuck that guy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, So I know I'm going to get some people like that. And I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to respond and handle it. Because, like, I know there's no point in getting mad. Um, but at the same time, like, I want to be able to defend yeah. myself. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fucking give him the time of day too much. I would just be like, you know, I'm just trying to be myself. And if that bothers you, then maybe you're insecure about yourself. Well, I, I don't know if I would say that, but that's what my brain is, you know, how, how I would react right now. Like, yeah, but yeah, yeah, that sounds fucking shitty as fuck. But yeah, but. I I mainly want to go because like I do want to see some mm-hmm. people and like I said I just really need to face yeah my no do it go for it like uh, I mean if I could take anything away from these past two weeks is like I mean not to sound cliche but like it it, it makes me a stronger person right it, it, it makes your thin or your your thin god damn it your your, <laughs> your skin <laughs> yeah, you know what I was saying uh yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because like, I mean, it's like, I mean, is it scary? Yeah, of course. It freaked me out. Of course, it caused me a lot of dysphoria. But at the same time, like, if we hide from all these situations that are, you know, a part of life, like, you know, we're just, that's not going to help us, you know, grow stronger, you know, mentally, you know, it just, it, it helps, you know, we can't hide in our fucking safe space. Yeah, exactly. I guess that makes you and I, that's what makes you and I very different from the rest of the trans community. Yeah. Like they want to hide in their safe spaces and be catered to by the entire world when, you know, you and I, like, we know that's not how life works. And uh, we just want to grow stronger uh, but like people who hide in their safe spaces, they don't realize that, you know, your problem with your insecurity isn't going away by hiding yeah. from it. Like it's just gonna eat exactly. you more. For sure. But uh, another thing that happened while I was there was another transgender course, you know, and I think I had told you like that I had already dealt with a transgender uh, course once at my job. And now here was another one, which I wasn't expecting. And that's even worse. Like, at least like when I dealt with that first transgender course, it was, you know, at my job. And 
I'm pretty open and out there. So I could make jokes and I could like, you know, respond, you know, naturally or whatever. But because I was stealth in this and, and in a new, new environment, like a transgender course was even extra cringy. And I couldn't really say a whole lot because I didn't want to clock myself, but it was just, <laughs> it sucked. Um, and I'm like, I don't know, like, it, like, it, like, because it's basically telling everybody to walk on eggshells around. Kind of. Right? It's, it's just a very unnecessary, like, it goes into, like, gender identity, and then it goes into, I think, like, you know, people identify, you know, people identify differently, and they, they however somebody identifies, you know, I, you know, like, acknowledge that or, or something, and then it talks about trans, like, words that people use, or the words that people that are trans use. And I think it talked about like transgender people. Um, gender transition is another friendly word we can use. Um, it's just like really cringy. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, and like, it was probably, yeah, it was much. too much. I don't mind if people want to, you know, educate about trans people. It's not like I'm against it, but it really isn't that long. It's, there's not that much to say about it. You know, some people, you know, yeah, like it could be – there's a way to present it that's less Yeah, I could sum it up in very briefly in like probably less than five minutes. You know, there's no need for me to throw in, oh, and by the way, you know, some people identify as, you know, this and that. I don't know. It's just too much. And like I think what hurts more is that I have to sit in this room and watch people's reaction, right? Which as you can imagine, like ain't nobody going to react to that in a positive way. You know, there were questions that they ask and comments that they made. And, you know, of course, like to some people like, oh, they're all transphobic, but they're not. They're regular fucking people that guess what? They don't like immerse themselves into the trans community and I don't expect them to. So they're going to react. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, shit, we exactly. don't. <laughs> um, and so their reactions were normal. Like, I don't, I don't hate them for it, but I know that a lot of their questions are coming from a place of like, you know, they don't ignorance because they don't know and also some of these comments are coming from a place of guess what like guess what one of the jokes that i heard was uh it's ma'am and where does that come from all oh, right that stupid transgender woman that lost her shit at a GameStop. so it's and it, it boy it goes down to that you know people are going to have negative things to say about us mostly because of the negative uh you know individuals that are trans that make it in the media that now reflect upon me, which is what really pisses me off, you know? Yes. So it, it, it was really frustrating. Uh, obviously, you know, I didn't, I didn't ask too much. I think the only question I asked because I really was about to explode was where do you guys get this information from? Um, because I, I really wanted to know where they're, they're getting this info from um, to put it up on this, in this class. Um, but yeah. But uh, even sitting there, I felt like, you know, the elephant in the room, I thought, you know, everybody's going to figure out that the one trans person is, is here. Uh, but but I mean, to be honest, nobody – I want to say that no one clocked me, but obviously you never know. There's some people that are pretty good about it, but I would say like 90% of people had no idea. Maybe there were some that did, but all right, like let's just put it this way. I realized that, no, that in my class at least, nobody really thought I was trans because – <laughs> this girl that said because of your well, lack of my reactions. lack of reactions i was just really blending in honestly i didn't I, I wasn't trying to act like you know i wasn't trying to to draw attention to myself basically but uh there was just this girl that sat next to me um you know who i like very much she was she's cool as hell i'm not hating on her but like she literally turned to me one day i forgot why this even came up um but but she turned to me and she asked me if there was any transgender people that work at my job and I really wanted to say, yeah, me, <laughs> but, but like, I also didn't want to say that because I really just, I didn't want to talk about that because I knew as soon as I talked about it, like I would get clocked. And also like, there'd be so, so much for me that I want to say, you know, that I didn't want to say in a public classroom, you know, but yeah. even somebody like, this is how, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like we're just fucking a little bit nuts because like her asking me that, why would she ask me that if not? you know, she doesn't think I'm trans. She, I, you know, why would she ask me that? But I responded to that in my head thinking she knows, she obviously knows that I'm trans. She's asking me this to fuck with me. But then later on, she asked this other question. Uh, like she was like asking if 
my girlfriend and I were planning on having kids and I'm like, she wouldn't fucking be that much of a dick. <laughs> like, why would she ask me that too? So I'm like, okay, obviously, you know, I pass pretty well and I'm just being crazy paranoid in my head, you know? Um, and I, yeah. I, I, that's, I hate that about being trans. I hate the, the mind games, you know, I feel like I'm a pretty strong person, but despite the fact that I feel pretty confident in myself, like, you know, just feeling dysphoric about certain body parts and just knowing your identity, you know, whether you're stealth or not, like deep down, you're always going to know that you're trans and that is always going to eat at you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah. indeed. <laughs> so for me personally, like it was, it was great being stealth. Like, you know, like I had never really experienced that. Like I obviously I, I talked to guys at my job and stuff like that, but like I had never really gone into a locker room. I had never really like sat down, you know, at a, at a table with like, six other dudes you know who like were all from like detroit i believe like and, and those guys like they were a little bit more intimidating to me personally than like a country guy no offense but you know they they just had that city energy and i just like it in a way like it made me shit my pants because i'm from a city originally but obviously like you know these are dudes that like i feel like if i get clocked you know they might kick my ass or something if they're not comfortable with a trans guy um so like but like the joys of being stealth, like I get that a hundred percent, but at the end of the day, like it's still, you know, being stealth doesn't erase being trans. And so I think that, yeah, yeah it's, it's hard. hard for sure. So I think that's my biggest problem is like, it's not going to erase that I'm trans and I'm still, there's still going to be that voice in my head that reminds me that you're trans regardless, you know? And it's not like, I'm not trying to say we're crazy and we hear voices obviously, but like, you know, it's just this deep down, you know, you're trans, you know, um, yeah, it's in yeah, insecurity. Basically. And so to me, like I find I don't know, I find more peace with like being open about being trans and and you know, cracking jokes about it because I'm sorry, it is kind of funny in in some areas, but uh but yeah. Yes, it is. Um, but I don't know. It it was rough um and I I'm just I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy like going through all that now, uh even though at the time it was it sucked. You know, there were days where like, I not going to lie. I was, I really just wanted to fucking cry or die. Cause like, it, it was just like, it was pretty, pretty fucking rough. Like I, I wanted to talk about it, but I didn't want to talk about it. You know, I, I just, but I know like, especially with dudes, like I, I feel like dudes especially have weird things to say about trans people, you know? Well, they do because they, they, um, the first thing that, they think of is tranny porn probably probably yeah. <laughs> uh so they think you know chicks with dicks and then they and they also think about those pushy trans people that demand they date uh yeah yeah exactly them. so i don't think they have the best uh image of trans people in general so I don't think, you know, trans men like us even yeah. cross their no, mind. No, they don't. Yeah, at all. But, oh, man, I forgot to say this. I meant to say this shit. So, um, one of the things, like, uh, the girl I was talking about who asked me if I was trans, by the way, uh, like, uh, like I said, like, she's a pretty cool person. So, like, I, I did want to keep in touch with her and some other people. Um, so, like, some of these people had asked for my Instagram and stuff. Which I told them all, you know, I, I, I'm going to add you guys later, you know, because I didn't want to add them while we were still there because I didn't want to erase anything that I have on my profile just to hide my identity. Um, so I waited. So I waited till I was like on a plane far away from them. Um, and so then I added them and um, and then I sent this girl a message and I was like, hey, like to answer your question in an honest way. Uh, yes, there are there is a transgender person <laughs> at my job and it's me. And um, her respond her response was like, wait, what? <laughs> like she was real confused, um, <laughs> which was hilarious. <laughs> right. Um, and then, uh, believe it or not, this, this was actually, I, like, I was really, I'm still kind of shocked to, to hear this, but like, cause like, I, I forget that some people, you know, that are cis or whatever, they, they watch, you know, trans people, but like, she started talking about how, you know, she watches uh, trans YouTubers. And I was like, Oh, what, <laughs> you know, like, I didn't expect that at all. 
I was like, really, like, you know, which ones do you watch? And I'm over here thinking, like, she probably watches, like, some of the ones I don't like, right? And she's like, yeah, I really, I like watching trans YouTubers that, like, make fun of sensitive people. And I'm like, this girl must watch, like, Calvin Garrett or something, right? <laughs> so I was yeah. like, right, yeah. yeah so I was like, <laughs> are you talking about Calvin? Like, and she was like, yes, I love Calvin and, and Ryan and, and London and that whole group. I'm like, wow, what the fuck? That's pretty rad. But uh, she says she watches it just for like educational purposes, which is pretty cool. But like, uh, you know, I don't know. These are things I guess I forget, right? I forget that it makes me feel like, like sometimes I forget that, you know, I'm not, even though it feels like it, especially when you're out there living, like you feel like you're this 0.1%, right? Like you're the only trans person in your town or that, that people, people know, know period yeah. but you never know you really never know somebody next to you could be trans and somebody that you don't think knows shit about trans people actually like follows trans youtubers which is wild you know like it's it's pretty rad um and and in that sense as much as like for me personally i don't need to see that much visibility and i know like the community is like so pushing pushing pretty hard for visibility and shit but like in this sense like i mean is it kind of cool to see to have some visibility out there to where like, you know, your average girl like now knows more about trans people just because of this YouTuber. Like that's pretty, pretty rad. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. That, that, that honestly gives me hope because good Lord, like all the trans, most of the trans men that mm -hmm. I listen to, like, they don't they don't want to push for trans men's visibility because like they don't have any balls like they don't want to take mm -hmm. space or the spotlight away from trans women because because reasons uh but when in reality like you know trans men face a lot of the same problems that trans women do too like we get attacked too and it's not in the media yeah. or anything but if we get killed too, it's not in the media because yeah, nobody exactly. gives a fuck. Like, unless unless you're at the top of the oppression hierarchy, aka a mm -hmm. trans woman, then nobody gives a fuck. And that's the same exact reason why people who supposedly speak for us also right. don't give a fuck. Like, like they really just tell, just preach that we should shit down. Which we should sit down and shut up. And I'm yeah. like, I don't. They don't get the harm that. they're actually doing to us, to be honest. You know. Yes, and like, I just really wish the trans masculine community would grow some yeah, fucking balls. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know why I said that. Obviously, two of them. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I, last thing I'm just gonna throw out there for anybody that's listening and is about to travel. Okay. You know how when you travel, you got to go through that body scanner unless unless you get fucking lucky and go through the metal detector, right? Okay. So yeah. one of the things that stressed me out about traveling was knowing that I was possibly going to get stuck going through a stupid body scanner, which, of course, I mean, it's built to recognize female body or male body. So I thought, okay, well, um, I, there's no way I'm going to travel without my binder on, Um and so I was like, I'm going to have to wear my binder and I feel like that's going to clock me or somehow. And then I was like, I'm going to have to wear like a packer because what if my downstairs area pops off? So basically, um, yeah, uh, my downstairs area didn't pop off. Um, and by the way, when I traveled twice, like whether I wore a packer or not, as long as they hit the mail option, it didn't alarm downstairs. So like if anybody's listening and you're like, freaking out about traveling. I don't really think it makes a difference if you wear a packer or not. It's still, as long as, as long as you pass as mail and they hit that mail button, uh, it shouldn't clock you downstairs. Now, uh, upstairs area, your chest area, whatever, if you don't have top surgery and you were a, a binder, that shit will go off. And before I was even going to deal with this, I thought when, if it comes up, I'm going to just tell them, that I'm wearing like a compression, like undershirt, you know, like, cause some guys wear that shit to work out. Also people that used to be heavy and have loose skin, they wear that to keep everything in place. Right. So I figured that's not uncommon. I'll use that. Of course, go through the body scanner. It goes off in the chest area. And, uh, in a moment of panic, I can't even think. And this dude, 
uh he's like oh it looks like you're going off right there or whatever whatever you know my chest area and i'm like um it's a binder and, <laughs> and uh and this dude literally said a binder what's a binder and like i literally wanted to die right like <laughs> he said that out loud like this is a foreign concept so like my point is is like if you're gonna travel and stuff like know that not everybody's gonna know what a trans person is also know that when you go through security, there's certain things that you're going to have to go through and maybe possibly changing your language and using different words might help. Like, I really wish it, I had cha changed it to like a compression, like shirt, whatever, because then at that point it would be like, oh, whatever. You know what I mean? But because I said binder, like, yeah, what dude is going to know what the fuck that is? Nobody, I mean, you know, like no dude yeah. knows that. Like, so it freaked this dude out, which just made me like so fucking just I. <laughs> seriously like wanted to die um i felt like there was a light shining on me or something but uh yeah that's pretty much that that's all i wanted to end it with <laughs> like i just want to throw that out there because like i hadn't dealt with that before like have you traveled at all yeah but i never traveled okay. while wearing a binder because i i managed to do um oh KG really tape yeah yeah before top surgery yeah, because, like, I refuse to wear a yeah. binder for that I, long. I fucking hear you. If I didn't have to, I wouldn't. Um, KT tape, yeah. does that actually, like, did that, like, did you travel, like, with that and that, like, worked? It worked for me because I started out with a gotcha. pretty small chest that I was able to just, um, you know, kind of yeah. tape it down and uh wear a loose t-shirt or yeah a hoodie or something right on but um i guess uh just to kind of wrap up this episode <laughs> oh um disclaimer if you're going to use kt tape you have to take it off in the oh, shower really? why is that yeah it's gotcha. gonna hurt if you don't <laughs> all right all right, good, good one. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, like I was saying, uh, just to wrap up this this episode, um, all I'm gonna say is, uh, yeah, the last two weeks sucked. I'm really grateful to be back home, and <laughs> uh, I'm grateful for this podcast where I could like vent, you know, before therapy tomorrow. It's awesome. And then, um, yeah, I don't know, dude. Like, despite all the shit that I go through being trans, and you know, I know like other people have it harder than me. And I know, you know, other people are a pre T and stuff like all, all, all I really want to say is like, just, just kind of know that like, whether you're on T or not, there is a, a world out there of like social norms that, I mean, you can try your hardest to smash these norms, but they're really not going to go anywhere. You know, guys are going to act and be guys and girls are going to act and be girls nothing is going to really tear that apart because it is just what it is in our society. And so like, just, I really, I really wish the community would just like kind of mentally prepare and know these things, you know, don't expect to go out there and pass and, you know, not feel awkward or whatever, or, you know, if you're going to go out and you want to pass and you do pass or whatever, then yeah, put, put some, some effort, effort into, into it. it. Like that's that's another thing I I I wanted to briefly touch on is like, dude, like I mean, yeah, I am probably really lucky, or not probably. I know that I'm lucky, obviously, because of my facial hair. Like that doesn't happen to every trans guy after. Like mine came in probably like after two months or three, right? So I know I'm lucky in that aspect, but even still, like I still put in fucking effort to look the way I do. I mean, the hair grows, yeah, but like uh, binding. You know, things like that, like what I wear, um, just uh, manner, ma yeah, manners. Although I, I don't really feel like I'm, I don't know, I, for me, like, I don't, I'm not really trying to do anything special, but, but yeah, like all these things, like they, they make up this package to who you are and how the world sees you. And I mean, let me tell you, like guys, like they can fucking smell, they can smell pussy real quick. <laughs> I'm just saying, and it's not necessarily mm -hmm. like if you're a soft guy, that's fine. I'm just saying like that being a soft guy and being perceived as that, that comes with another set of rules and social norms and shit. And like, personally me, I, I'm not trying to be in that box. You know, I'm just trying to blend in as your average dude. And I just, you know, like, I don't know, not to just keep saying the same shit, but like, just, 
I wish the community would just realize like, it doesn't matter if you shout the trans men or men, like what you put out there, how you act, the way you engage with the world and how re you respond to them is, is what really fucking matters, you know? So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm still pretty grateful being me, despite the fact that being a tranny is a lot of work, but <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't I wouldn't have it any other mm -hmm. way, even like honestly. So when I look back on my old life, like I, I don't miss that version of me at all. Like I'm I'm pretty happy who I am today. So yeah, look at us ending on a positive agree. mushy note. Um so yeah. Uh but that's pretty much it. Um mm -hmm. anything else you want to say before we uh end this? Uh just I don't don't do drugs. I don't know. Just, man, don't do drugs and uh, just man <laughs> just up. Just man up, God yeah. Damn. Just man up, God. Uh, I don't think everybody's going to like that. That's, I can't think, but there's there's a response that you're going to get to that. Fuck them. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that people expect the world to cater to them whenever yeah. the world yeah, doesn't exactly. owe you shit. So that's why yeah. I say The world man doesn't up. own you shit. Own you shit. <laughs> I almost said own you ship. So yeah, um let's end this because I feel like I'm saying really dumb stuff right now. So uh all right, until, until next time. Okay. Uh thanks for tuning in. Peace.